Question number one. How long have you been trying to conceive? Uh, Jason and I have been trying to conceive since September 2011, one month after my laparoscopic surgery, which was performed on August 18th, 2011. Um, on that day, I was officially confirmed um, that I did have stage 4 endometriosis. And um, so, yeah, so we took a break in February, and I'll, I'll let you know why in a second. So it's been a total of nine months of trying. Uh, so basically, after my lap, my doctor had a talk with Jason and I and said, Due to the severity of your endo, the best time to conceive after laparoscopic surgery is a month after the operation. And so the, so the month and then a year leading up to the one year mark of your surgery is the best time to conceive um, for someone who's done laparoscopic surgery and has stage 4 endometriosis. Uh, due to the severity of my endo, being at stage four, my doctor advised Jason and I that if nothing has happened, so if I um, was not pregnant by the six month mark, for me to consult um, or get fertility assistance as soon as possible, um, just due to the severity of my endo. So. Um, so that's what we did. Um, February was the six month mark and that's why we took a break. Um, and because that was the month that we were meeting with our fertility doctor um, at the fertility clinic here in Toronto. So even though it's been nine months, ladies, it's really, I mean, our whole journey, like it's with Jason being diagnosed with Marfan syndrome and the effect that it had on us on family planning uh, because just to recap Jason um, suffers from Marfan syndrome and he has a 50% chance of passing down um, that gene to our offspring so the day that we found out he had Marfan's we were counseled by a geneticist um, about the whole passing down of the gene and what our options are to find out if the baby has Marfan's during pregnancy. Um, you know, if, if it did have Marfan's, would we terminate the pregnancy or would we continue on with the pregnancy? Um, you know, there's other options that we could do. We could do IVF and PGD. So even though we've been actively trying for nine months, it's been close to two years of dealing with the fertility challenges of trying to have our family. And it's, you know, we've kind of dealt with issues of like, you know, genetic disorders and how that plays a role in deciding how you're going to plan your family. But then, you know, so that was just like, you know, two years of us trying to figure out how we're going to plan our family. And then, bam, I get endometriosis. And then I've been told, hey, you know, I better start or we better start trying to have this family because after a year, the endo is going to come back. Every time I have my period, that leftover blood is going to stick to other areas in my, you know, my re reproductive organs and, and maybe, you know, stick to the ovaries again. And, you know, the best time is nap, like, so a month after my surgery, leading up to the year um, that the surgery was performed, because I'm the cleanest down there. I've been cleaned of all that leftover blood. So all that leftover um, endometria endometrium, I believe. So yeah, so we have been trying for nine months, but um, family planning and dealing with Jason's Marfan syndrome and the effect that it has on um, us trying to plan for family, dealing with a rare genetic disorder has really been over so close to two years. 
How many kids do we have? We have zero, nil, nada. We don't have any kids at all. We don't have any fur babies. Um, so yes. How, oh, how long have you been together? I have been with Jason for 10 years. Uh, we got engaged on March 3rd, no, March 5th, 2011. And you ladies are probably wondering, why hasn't this girl got married yet? Well, very simple. Um, when we found out that I had, uh, so we found out, so we got engaged in March. I already knew that um, by that point, I knew that I had cyst in me. And I basically, um, so when we had the surgery, Jason and I had to really talk about our future and what was more important for us? Was it to have a wedding and, you know, spend thousands of dollars to have this wedding? Or, you know, could we just postpone the wedding for now and concentrate on, you know, the illness that I've just been, you know, confirmed that I had? And, you know, the doctor is saying, you need to start trying right away because your endo is really bad and, you know... I've cleaned you out down there and you've got to start planning this family. So we put family first and we knew that there was a chance that I would need fertility assistance and it's not cheap as you ladies know. So, you know, the cost of a wedding is almost a cost of fertility treatments, um, especially IVF. So that's why we've had to put our wedding on hold. And it's okay. We've been together for 10 years. We're practically married uh, at the same... Um, so that to us is, is, is... It's important and we will get married in the future. But right now, our focus and all the hard work that we're, you know, we're doing right now is for us to have our baby. Um, so yeah. So wedding's been put on hold until I, uh, until we get our family. What are some crazy things you do while trying to conceive, while TTCing? Um, I have a sex swing. I don't. <laughs> that was for you, Princess Di, because when I watched your video tag, or your, sorry, your TTC tag, you said that you had a sex swing and I just thought that was the most hilarious thing. And then you're like, no, I'm just kidding. So I did it. I thought that was cute. Um, no, I don't have a sex swing. Um, I don't really do anything crazy while trying to conceive. Um, I drive myself crazy. I drive myself crazy in trying to eat the right foods. I try to eat the right foods because of you know, my endo, I try to eat foods that are, you know, really good for fertility and, and, and you know, to boost up your cervical mucus and, and make you ovulate. Um, I, um, what else? So, you know, you know, when we were active, like, well, right now we're, we've done IUI, but, you know, when we baby dance, I'd put my legs up in the air and, all that kind of stuff. I've had, I've tried like fertility or fertility, fertility, is that the name? Yeah, fertility, fertility tea or something. Uh, I've tried that tea to kind of make me pregnant, no luck. But um, the crazy stuff that I do during TTC is probably how crazy I drive myself during this whole uh, TTC journey, so. And I have a sex swing. Not. I don't. Anyways, um, does your hubby slash fiance know all about the TTC? Yes. Jason knows everything about the, you know, Jason knows everything about the whole TTC journey. Um, we are, we work very well as a team. He's my number one support. So if he didn't know anything about it, I would just be lost without him and I would probably crumble and hide in a closet and not want to come out. Um, he is what keeps me going. He is what keeps me going to work and trying to keep sane 
while dealing with infertility. So yes, he knows everything about the TTC journey. He has accompanied me to all my appointments and has been my number one support. Um, so yes, he does know everything about it. Have you been diagnosed with any kind of infertility? Yes, I have been diagnosed with stage four endometriosis on August 18th, 2011. Um, and that was confirmed with VA laparoscopic surgery. I had two cysts the size of softballs on my ovaries, or sorry, blood filled cysts resting on my ovaries and they were removed and I was confirmed that I had stage four endo. Also, Jason um, suffers from Marfan syndrome, which is a rare genetic connective tissue disorder, and he has a 50% chance of passing that gene on to our offspring. So even though it's not an, an infertility issue, it's definitely um, an issue with us trying to plan for our family and whether we, you know, do, do we have a child with Marfan's or do we you know, do IVF and go through PGD. So, so that's kind of affected our, our TTC journey. Um, but as you ladies know, right now, we've kind of decided to let nature take its course and um, that we would love this baby regardless um, of whatever it ends up having. So if it has Mark fans or not, we will love it with all our hearts. Uh, what keeps you busy during the two week wait. They're definitely working. Um, working gets my mind off of things. What keeps me busy? Um, definitely watching all your amazing videos, ladies. Um, that's keep That keeps me busy. Doing these videos keep me busy. Uh, spending time with Jason, my girlfriends, um, I have a select group of girlfriends who are my safe people. These are my girls who know everything about my TTC journey. They have been nothing but supportive and amazing and um, through this journey. And so talking to them, being open with them, letting them know how I feel, that that's what keeps me busy during the two week wait, or if anything makes me feel um, that I have my team of people to uh, keep me sane during the two week wait. Um, I'd like to say that I do a yoga marathon or a meditation marathon, but um, I haven't. And if I'm not pregnant this round, that's something I definitely want to um, kind of focus on for, you know, the, the two week wait or or just in general just kind of trying to be more healthy and, and stuff so uh, or, or and, and trying to live in the now and not trying to worry about what the future holds or you know living in the past and stuff like that so I've just been trying to focus on that focus on that kind of type of thinking but it's so hard so 